Welcome to the show. I'm Danella. Here's what's happening now. This week, we are joined by a very special millennial, my nephew, Daryl. I'm talking to him, and we're going to be discussing the N-word. Here's why. After recently going to an ASAP Rocky concert and seeing the majority of the audience not look like me, but saying the N word over and over, over. I'm like, yo, maybe I'm old. I think I'm old. So I want to talk to the youth and see what they say. Yeah, that's what we're exploring. Uh, and also political pop is on deck. Why not just set it off right now? Here is your political pop. We'll head to Iowa where a court has struck down a new law. This is known as the strictest abortion law. So the law said a woman could not receive an abortion once a fetal heartbeat is detected. Now that's pretty early. That could be as early as six weeks. And to be honest, not a lot of women even know they're pregnant by six weeks. So a judge did strike that law down, said that it was unconstitutional. The governor in Iowa is very disappointed. She feels that once a heartbeat is detected, if you end that heartbeat, that's killing it. Um, supporters of abortion rights say that women in Iowa deserve to be able to have a safe way to have an abortion if that's what's best for them, medical reasons or lifestyle reasons. So there is no doubt that this will most likely be appealed and we could see this go all the way up to the Supreme Court. I'm Danella Seelock, the Nile, and that was your political pop. Now, before you guys get to meet my nephew and we'll talk about the N-word, first, check out these pictures. Come on in, Daryl. So, this is us at the ASAP concert. So, before you even know it's an ASAP concert, check out this picture. I'm literally taking it thinking, would you know this is a rap concert I'm at? by this audience probably nowadays, yes. Um, and this is in Washington, D.C. It was a really good show, and then you'll see there he is on stage, everybody's rocking, everything is good. And then, you know, he's hitting some songs, and I'm seeing some ends being said and rapped out, and I'm like, what's going on? Okay, and so this is why now, Daryl, you're joining us. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, um, he's fresh off eye surgery, so if his eyes look kind of crazy, that's why, so forgive him. But I wanted to talk to you, so I'm there with um, our cousin Rainy, and so last ASAP concert, it was all the ASAP cats were there, right? But this is the first time Rocky was by himself. You were there at the other concert. Yeah, the first one. All right, this one was even bigger. He had more cars. Remember he had the one car on stage, like, he had half, like a half a car? half a car. Oh, no, he had full one. cars. See, we got pictures of the full cars, three full cars, uh -huh. you know, floating down from the ceiling. It was a really great concert performance wise. He's a rock star. They had a mosh pit. Oh. Yeah. A legit mosh pit. Legit. People were moshing. Yeah, Ugh. and he was like, mosh, mosh. I didn't get that on video. I didn't have time for that. Okay. But um it got wild. Uh during the concert, somebody had a seizure uh seizure at some point. I think that's drug related. Uh somebody passed out. <laughs> Another person we saw get pa you know, passed out. But Rainey was asking me, I said, Man, you know, it's been a while since I've been like in the mix like this. You know, normally I know it doesn't sound crazy, but we were backstage, but this time we weren't. We were like watching it. Yeah, like in the mix. We weren't like on floor level in the mix, but kind of. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. My cousin asked, how is this different? I said, it's wild because this reminds me of like the late 90s. All the outfits, Daryl, you cats are wearing are like the 90s, right? And I said, you know, it's been a while since I've been around this many young white girls. Because most of my, my friends are older now. We're all adults. So I hadn't been around like, you know, teenage and young adults. Mm -hmm. white like this many of them so they look like in vogue do you remember in vogue no like the magazine no that's vogue in vogue is a the, singing group oh hold on to your love do, do <laughs> anyway. they have eric benet oh my god so this is why we got to talk to millennials so anyway here's the thing they had on like ash it wash jeans ripped in the jeans holes in the jeans mm -hmm. um halter tops we used to wear this stuff in the 90s right oh, okay. and so the halter tops also had the shoulders out but long sleeves i mean this is classic what we were rocking but the big difference is like when i went to concerts and clubs with like my white sorority sisters they still looked like themselves rapping the music or singing the songs these girls were looking like Cardi B. They were looking like, are these white girls? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. 
right, middle fingers. Then they were also hitting the N word. <laughs> so I'm just like, what? Then the weird thing too, is we was there, um, we were there with one of Kyle's friends and his friend had a female friend with him, right? This female friend is not African-American and she was like, in please, like ninja please to him. Like shut the F up ninja, like in a term of endearment. But I was like, what? <laughs> so I was literally like, I have to be old. You know, and so we were talking about this on Adverse Reaction this week, and I'm not sure. Did you did you hear the show this week? Uh, I didn't hear that one, though. Eye surgery. So, anyway, we were talking about and really fleshing this idea out, and we were getting people like our listening um, listeners on Adverse Reaction, man, they range from, shoot, their 70s all the way down to their 20s, you know? So, cats that were 70 and 50, even, you know, in their 60s and stuff were saying, look, you guys will say it to one another because you don't know what it's like to be called that with an NR. You don't know what it's like to have your grandmother for example or grandfather that's the last thing your relative heard before they died and so the older generations were really like that's why young people can more easily say you know it's a term of endearment and so we were battling really flushing this idea out as the show you know um, progressed during the week mm. you know is it okay to say isn't it you know I personally feel it's not okay to say it's not a term of endearment and I question this is that when you speak that way I think it's easier you know, because we talk about violence in the world. It's mm -hmm. easier to kill a in than it is to kill a king or kill your brother. Right. You know, that's what I feel. And mm -hmm. so that's my personal take. Well, you know, Aladdin, he's yeah. a millennial like you, older. Mm -hmm. But, you know, his his take is this. is like, um, it is a term of endearment. You know, why are we giving that word that power, that negative power? Okay. Does that makes sense? Yeah. And so he brought up this. If you shouldn't use the N word, right mm -hmm. then why is it popular in music and why do you patron music that uses the n-word because okay. it's not cool for example to say only we could say it but other people can't right right i don't think anybody should be saying it there's where you come in because my first question to you mm -hmm. millennial yes is do you use the n-word uh, obviously not around me do you use the n-word um i haven't actually used the n-word since 2015 like as a term of endearment I so you were it. using it back in the day right okay so what made you stop using it uh, what made me stop using it is actually when my friend um he started he was like so if we're allowed to use the n-word we should be able to use other slurs like um porch monkey yo is this friend what race is this friend he's black Oh, he oh. Like, so he was like, why don't we take the power out of all the words? Of all the negative words. And just use those as terms of endearment. And he was like, I see if you saying. can't figure a reason out. I to, see what you're saying. To pass that along. Right. Then don't right. use the then N word. Then don't use it. Right. Now, if you've stopped using the N word, the question is, do you still listen to music that uses the N word? I do. <laughs> Here's why, here's why. Right. <laughs> so I, I I don't view them as like when they are using the N-word, um, I typically will replace it in my brain with a different phrase. Phrase, okay. Because right. that's where we're starting to uh, progress it to because it's almost like, well, if you feel, because I don't think you should say it, but I do know I still have songs that say it, m you know, music that says it, um, movies that say it. Mm -hmm. And even though I do replace it at the end of the day, we're consuming. And if money is power, the question is, what are you doing with your power? Ooh, if money is power, mm -hmm. what do you do with your power? But I'm not paying. But like, let's say if you download it, not just steal it. You don't download any music. I mean, you stream it. Streaming stream counts it. as money. Okay. They get credit for those streams. Okay. So, Hmm. Then think about it that way. No, but that's why I wanted to get you on the spot. <laughs> like, what you gonna do? What you gonna say? Because I think, in a lot of ways, it's easier for us as we're older to say, right? When you know better, you do better. But then when people start hitting you with like changing your lifestyle, it gets mm -hmm. harder. Because I see this equation or, or this scenario similar to the NFL strike, the protest. 
Right. The reason I see it that way is because you have half of our population saying N-word is okay, it's a term of endearment, it's power. You have the other half saying no, it's negative, don't use it. Well, with the NFL strike, you have us saying we're going to boycott the NFL um, because of their, you know, because we're boycotting social justice, but look how they responded to the people boy boycotting social justice, social justice, so we're going to boycott them. Mm -hmm. Well, you have the other half of the population saying, well, look, there's black coaches, there are black players, these are career that they have and we still also don't want to give up our pastime Super Bowl is coming up people want hot, they want what hot wings they want beer they want to watch the game and see the halftime show right, right. that's what the and the other popular part of population is like Gladys why are you singing the national anthem big boy you know better why are you there they looking at Travis Scott like you young go ahead you know we we expect this from you but to me it's almost like the population's feeling like we didn't agree to this boycott. And I think that's what's happening with the N-word. Because I remember, Daryl, before you were born, there was a period where rappers were promoting this on television. They were on interviews saying, we're taking the word back. We're using the N-word. It's like, it's a term of endearment. And it was a huge push that occurred. Because I remember there was music where, rap music where they didn't say it. You know, but then it became more like not explicit music, just regular. What's up, bruh? You know, my bruh. And some of the best choruses got it in it, which is so frustrating. I can remember being in Made in America and then Drake brings out two chains for no lie. No oh, lie, yeah. no lie. Real, real say word. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but all the white girls next to me are like hitting the ends. And it's like at first, it's like, cause when, especially you got, you got two chains, and, you know, he's like going off and mm -hmm. he rapping and you want to just like, go, oh, yeah, that makes two of us. Bam. Mm -hmm. You know, like you just want to just keep going. Right. But I'm looking and I'm like, I can't even rock this out no more. But it's also because I hadn't been to like in crowded concerts in so long. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Like I hadn't been like kicking it. Out in the mix. In the mix, in the in the mosh pit. It's because we normally backstage. We, That's where we really normally are. Backstage, <laughs> like a little booth or something. That's normally <laughs> us. And so I, I, I was just saying, like normally you get a hookup or something like that. Somebody hooks you up and you're in there. And so I was just missing that the audience obviously has changed because you know hip hop is the number one music in the world, yep, right yep. in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, if you have a genre pop, pop you, you know, saying over and over in 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 in, you know, then it's like, are we tripping to expect other races not to use it? Well, no, but then people still tripping while out on other races for using the word, which to me, I'm like. Well, if y'all gonna use the word, you might as well let everyone use the word. It's not like, like. But how do you feel? How do I? Yeah, feel? you got some white friends. I re we went to karaoke with his homegirl, and she wanted to do Drake Amelie. <laughs> it's it's Lil Wayne Amelie. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said Drake. Because, I know because I was talking Drake doing, earlier. Lil Wayne. He doing, did he did a lot of Drake. You did a lot of Drake. I did Drake with two chains. I didn't do Drake a lot. with two chains. I did a lot of two it was chains. A lot of two chains. Two chains. And and uh, sorry, yeah, Wayne Amelie. Yes. That's my BT heyday. So I'm waiting for the end to drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. And you picked a lot of songs with N in it. Yes. I know. I and we're in this like so, like private karaoke room, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is the first time I'm meeting her. She been his best friend since y'all was like. Since eighth grade. Eighth grade. I'm literally like, yo, if she hit this N word. But then I'm like, nah, I can't do it. But it was a lot of ends. It was. It right. Was. So typically in the music, I I would like, because I used to replace, like, whenever someone was like, hey, what's up, my N? I'm like, what's up, my peasant? So people would just oh, look yeah, at me. Oh, you did used to say, what's up, my peasant? Right. Yeah, like, why would you say that? Yeah. Right. And people would look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, oh, when you I'm rap sorry. It, when you rap it in songs? I, I, yes, I, I'll write See what I'm saying? But, so how do you, what do you think we should do? What is the solution in your young millennial mind? The future is yours. The future is mine. It is yours. But it's slowly being stripped away by the people with the, the baby boomers. But whatever. Oh my God, we're not getting on. <laughs> if you a baby boomer and you're watching this podcast, <laughs> you listening to it on SoundCloud. Thanks, baby boomers. We wouldn't be here. If it we appreciate for you, guys. you. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you for all that you do. However, yes. Outside um, of the baby boomers, that's another day. Okay. Okay, I understand where you're going. Okay. 
Baby don't go Moon. there. We're not going there now. I want to focus on what we can do as people, you individually. What do you think um, should help? Because I can tell you, like, now as a like a mom and I have a person that's like a little parrot mm. and right he's repeating everything that's being said and right, done right and so my conscious mind is like wow I got to teach him to always speak higher vibrational you know I got to teach mm -hmm. him to see kings in himself and in all the you know people that he see right. see queens same thing right you get what I mean mm -hmm. and so I'm as a mom can see the damage by saying the N word. I don't see the value in it, but I also never grew up thinking it was okay because your grandmother listened to all of the music that we brought into the house and she literally would throw it out. So I didn't grow up thinking that it was okay to say the word like bitch, for example, right. and call women that because I, I, it was never like okay, like normal talk. Right, but now it's becoming that. For some people, for, not for, for me and my right, crew. Right, right, right. Not I'm for saying, me and my I'm crew. saying though. No it's like they're using that as a term of endearment now. right it's like so it's like hard for me because i see it as being so negative mm -hmm. you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. even though people say like no it's a term of endearment and i see it as like well then you can't get mad when you have for example the florida man who was just pulling a gun on kids that were holding up people in traffic did you hear that story so on Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, there were kids that were protesting gun violence and they take the bikes, they ride bikes in the street and they just, you know, are protesting gun violence. Well, traffic can get angry because traffic can be slowed by this. Well, and this is part of a nonprofit. This guy gets out of the car, his, I guess, wife or girlfriend or something. She was like, you ran over my toe to one of the kids. I didn't see it. Um, but he takes out a gun and is like waving it at kids. One of the kids was 11 years old. So he gets in his car, goes away. He later gets stopped by police. He does get arrested, not for waving the gun or calling them the N-word over and over and over, ER, you know, but because the gun was not, it was registered. concealed and not registered. He didn't have a permit for his gun. Mm -hmm. So that in Florida makes it illegal. But the N-word, it's all good, brother, it's all good. Well, you know, freedom of speech, that's, right. that's typically where everyone goes to when it comes to any of these words right we currently have a and, and you should have freedom i'm just kind of saying then i don't know because let me tell you about this one caller that called on the show this one caller that called he said he had a girlfriend and in that relationship he said he dated white girls before but in this relationship um she would get mad and call him er you know mm. like f you in <laughs> you know and then he said she would tower in the corner like he's gonna hit her and so for him he didn't feel power in the world he's older i feel like he's uh maybe in his 60s um and he's in la he's real real frequent listener of uh, Adverse Reaction. Well, his thing is, why do we give words powers? People should be able to say whatever they want. He said, when my girlfriend would say that, I, I'm like, why just because you call me that because you're angry, it's gonna affect me. It's not. And, and, I, and I see what he's saying, but I still think that's two separate things because I see us um, saying something like this is making us promote and this negative thing. And I also think it, it, it's us not seeing the God in one another. Because mm -hmm. also there was a, a movement back in the day where they were saying like God, when they would speak to one another, like, what's up God, you know, I'm God body. And people, would you, did you remember this in hip hop back in the day? Uh, I remember the God body part. You remember that? And so it was like, I was lucky because I had variety, like our generation. And when I was looking out at your generation in that concert, <laughs> I was scared for y'all. <laughs> Because y'all don't have as much variety. Well, I mean, we got cats like Childish Gambino. He doesn't really. I, okay, Childish Gambino. Yeah, I listen but to But y'all don't have a lot of competing movements. We had competing, move, competing movements. You know what I'm trying to say? We mm -hmm. had backpack movement. You know, you had like um, artists that taught uh, black history, African history. Okay. You know what I mean? In their rhymes and it was popular and cool. And I think the majority of what's popular and cool now are like drugs, sex, and violence, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Right. Right. I'm not going to disagree with you there. Right. But a lot of it's really catchy, like. Right. And and I can't I can't be mad at it because it's just so catchy. So it's like, um, like I'm not going to lie to you. The chain. programming. It is. It's but. the programming. <laughs> Two chains. Lil Wayne, Two Chains, Lil, Lil Wayne, Wayne, Rick Ross, cats like that. 
Uh-huh. They they do a lot of it. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not even talking about any of the underground cats because you're not down with little little Yachty. Uh, uh, and they have little baby now. Little baby. I like his verse. Wah, wah, wah. I'm a baby. I like that verse, but everything else is terrible. But wait, L- little baby, like you know, little baby. No, you're not up the on the only it. the only baby. Nah, you're not up on that. No, 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 not that baby. It's this burnt. different. No, this is different baby. So you might be the wrong millennial. <laughs> We're gonna have to get some more millennials on the show. <laughs> We gonna not, I'm gonna have to get some more millennials brother. on the show. But no, I know. And we're little, gonna talk like more about little, this. Little Yachty, little do you Uzi. listen to little Yachty, little uh, Uzi Vert? Yeah, do you listen to them? Not really. I like because right, I, right. I, I so when I not, listen to them. That's cool. When I listen to them, it's catchy. But then I'm like, but I don't really want to listen to you. Your voice is annoying. The voice is annoying. So see what but I'm future, thinking. Yes. So what I'm thinking the larger problem is is that. It is selling. We're selling and consuming negativity. Yeah. We're selling and consuming and accepting it because it's catchy. But we're not realizing it's catchy for a reason. Mm. And is that reason to help us? No, nah, it's to bring us down. <laughs> right. But I already knew this. This it is where is. This so is where what, it's all what, going. And your millennial, what y'all gonna do? I mean, what you and your crew gonna do? <laughs> What me, are they gonna do? What y'all gonna crew, do? We could always just change, like we could go in, become rappers. I mean, but I mean literally though, yeah. because the first thing would start with your consumption, because that's the only thing right. you can't control. Your money is your power. Right. But how likely are you to say, I'm not gonna give this artist streams that are currently in rotation? Yeah. See? See, that is difficult. But, but what but, you could do, you could technically make your own music. That's that is okay. One separate from that, outside of making your own music, mm-hmm. you could listen to other artists. That's another option you have. You could, you could listen. What are you gonna do? Oh, what I'm gonna do? Uh, uh, see, if they're already on my playlist, then I can't really do anything about it because my playlist is so consistent. He acts like his playlist can't be altered. It can be altered. It's like the Ten Commandments. Once it strikes, <laughs> it's there for life. <laughs> like what? All right, but I know. Here's the thing. I knew this isn't gonna get settled in my it, one podcast. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we have I know to come that back to this. we'll have to come back to it. But I did want to just, um, you know, one talk about it. Also, talk to you guys, the audience. Um, you know, DM me on social media at Danella now. Email Danella. Wait, what's my email address? Uh, Danella at DanellaNow.com. You don't. You don't email me. Oh, I could have you know sworn. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I, he doesn't. I, I, I'll just send her a carrier pigeon. It's fine. Carrier pigeons are nice. Oh, my bad. Not carrier pigeon. Raven. I'll just send you a raven. All right. Thanks. Or smoke. Smoke. All right. Anyway, yeah, you can email me. Of course, also comment below. Again, when we have more time, um, we'll talk about this further. But I also wanted to just, because I didn't tell you, Daryl, what we were going to talk about. Because I, I wanted to see how you adjusted to what we want to talk about. Yes. You know, because the truth yes. is, is that we can Why say we all just... these ideas and we can say, okay, yeah, you got to change your consumption. But like, how likely are you to do that? All of us. Yeah, it's it's really hard. It's definitely really hard because it's like changing like, like when you change your meal plans, like 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 you know how your diet you change your diet. Oh, I thought you meant Not, like college meal plans. Oh, oh like oh, yo. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I meant like, di- like okay, your diet. Okay, yeah, diet. Your like, diet. Yeah, we can relate to that. Go yeah. ahead. Go so ahead. it's like changing your diet. It's like if at first you're like, oh, I'll have a burger every day and a pizza for lunch and cereal for breakfast, and then you're like. Oh, that's not really that healthy for me. Maybe I should incorporate a we salad. We got you. Then you change it. It's hard. Yeah, it, it's, in, it's really in summary, hard. You change it. It's hard. We gonna have to figure out something, guys, because we have to. They these cats are the youth. These cats are, are our future. These cats make a difference. Honestly, right? And so the idea would be, how do we also individually help ourselves, but help our next generation? Yeah. Part of it is also the simple fact that, because um, I've been to a few of my friends' house who are raising like younger kids, mm-hmm. and um, they just go ahead and play the uncensored music. I know. Like, like just straight up, like because they're like, "This is who like, I am." Right, but right. it's like you gotta like set an example for your kids. But it's kids setting examples for kids. You're right. Ultimately, Ultimately. it's young people setting examples for younger for people. young people. All right. 
Daryl, I think you might come back. You guys let me know how you think he did on the show. <laughs> might bring you back. All right. But you got to wear a t-shirt that say voice of the young people. And it's probably some young cast that's like, he's not my voice. I don't have to be your voice. I'm my voice. If you have a problem with it, then you guys can take it up with me. It's fine. <laughs> don't worry. I'll see you back later. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Again, thank you so much for joining the show this week. Um, and for those of you that are watching uh, or checking us out on Adverse Reaction, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Also, I actually had a couple people ask me about how can they donate to the show. Because I keep saying you can donate by clicking the link at the top. And I think people think there's a link that's going to pop up on the video. So for clarity, because I had some people say, I can't find it. On the home page, on the banner, where it says Danella Now, right? Connecting you with what you need to know now. It'll show you how to, you know, if you wanted to follow on Facebook or Instagram, there is where you can donate if that's what you'd like to do. Yes. You don't have to donate. I donate to him. It'd be like just coming right back. <laughs> coming right back. Um, as always, I hope you have an incredible weekend. And I will see you next week. Thanks for joining the show. Oh, no problem. Make me a sandwich if I ate meat. <laughs>